Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about AAR, Automated Alternate Routing. So in a way this is really a continuation of what we were talking about in the previous video, Regions and Locations. Uh, we discussed how call admission control is needed to control traffic across the WAN and that's when we introduced location-based CAC. Basically that it's used to limit the number of calls allowed across the network by controlling the total bandwidth allowed. So just to kind of review this, uh, if the two endpoints shown here place a call using the G.711 codec for audio, then they'll consume 87.2 kilobits per second, uh, 64 for the payload and then 23.2 for the headers. Now that means that this WAN link can support up to roughly 11 calls, assuming that there's no other network traffic consuming bandwidth at the time. So before, without location-based CAC, when the 12th call is attempted, we said that the quality of all the calls would suffer. But when CAC is implemented, the call attempt is instead rejected and the call fails so that the other calls continue without any loss in quality. Now, the problem with this is that all calls are potentially important. Uh, if that was a sales-related call, for example, then the salesperson, and by extension the company, could potentially be losing revenue. So all calls need to be treated as if they're important. And this is where automated alternate routing comes in. When a phone tries to place a call and CAC prohibits the call from crossing the WAN, then AAR can provide an alternative number to the destination along with an alternative path across the PSTN so that calls can still be connected. Now AAR is transparent to the end user, okay? So say, for example, that the original number we're dialing is a four-digit extension. When the user dials this extension, AAR would change it to a format that's supported by the PSTN. So let's say the original extension the user dialed was 1001. Without redialing it from the user's phone, it could automatically be changed to 1214-555-1001. So let's consider another scenario. What if the destination location doesn't support a PSTN connection? In this case, AAR can still be used to connect to a mobile number or a voicemail system that is reachable across the PSTN. Okay, now it's important to note that AAR works only when CAC is restricting the call. So that could be location-based CAC or location-based RSVP. We haven't really talked about RSVP yet because that's a pretty deep subject, but we'll definitely address that in a future video. Okay, so this means that AAR does not kick in uh, in the event of, for example, WAN failure or if the gateway is simply out of resources. Now, just to clarify, if the WAN does go down, there are other mechanisms in place that can reroute the call through the PSTN like uh, SRST, but it's not AAR. AAR works only when CAC is restricting the call. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how we can configure AAR on the CCM. And the first thing you want to do is turn it on. So for that, we're going to go to System and then Service Parameters. And then we're going to select our CUCM from the list. And then we're going to choose the Cisco Call Manager service. And now we want to scroll down, scroll down to where it says CCM Automated Alternate Routing. And there's only one setting under here, Automated Alternate Routing Enable. The default over here is false, so we're going to set that to true and then we'll click Save. So now that that's turned on, we want to configure the AAR group. So we'll go up to Call Routing and we'll select the first option here, AAR Group. Now to explain this, we're going to imagine a scenario where we have two offices, one in Dallas and one in, say, uh, New York. We'll keep it domestic just to make things simple. Okay, so to create our first group, we're going to click Add New and we'll call this one Dallas underscore AAR and then click Save and that creates our first AAR group. Okay now from here you can add a dial prefix. Now you don't have to put anything in here if it's not needed but that's going to depend on your specific dial plan uh, where your other offices might be and so forth. So for example when you're dialing out across a PSTN do you have to dial a number like 9 to get an outside line? Most businesses do but certainly not all. So in this case, we'll just pretend that, in fact, we do need to go ahead and dial 9, so we'll go ahead and do that. 
Now, there are other scenarios where you'd want to prefix the number, like if you're adding one to call long distance or adding the country code for an international call. But since it says here, prefix digits within Dallas AAR, we don't need to worry about those just yet. So let's go ahead and click Save. And let's add another one. Uh, so we'll click Add New. And we'll call this one NYC underscore AAR. Then we'll click Save. Now here, once again, where it says prefix digits within NYC AAR, we'll probably want to dial 9 to get an outside line, but, but that's it. That's all we need to add here. But down here, this is where we have to think about dialing to and from uh, Dallas and New York. So here it says prefix digits between uh, NYC AAR and other AAR groups, and that would include, of course, the Dallas group that we just created. So we can see here, this is uh, Dallas AAR from NYC. So when we're calling from New York to Dallas, we want to dial nine for an outside line and then one because it's a long distance call. OK, same thing here. Here we're calling to New York from Dallas. Again, we want to dial nine for an outside line and then one because it's a long distance call. OK, so we'll go ahead and click save. And just to recap, we've turned on AAR under the service parameters. Then under call routing, we went to AAR groups and created our groups. So now we just need to apply the groups to the line. So for that, we'll go to device, then phone. And I created a phone in advance. Uh, so we'll click find here. And we want to look for New York endpoint and select that. Now, I named it New York Endpoint because I want to emphasize that this endpoint is physically located in New York. You'll see uh, why that's important in just a second. Now we want to go into the line here and then scroll down to where it says AAR Settings. Okay, now remember when we were going over the slides, I said that AAR can go to a cell phone or voicemail. So if you wanted it to go to voicemail, you could just click uh, the voicemail box here then come over and select your AAR group and you'd be all set. But we're not going to do voicemail. What we're going to do is configure the call forward no bandwidth setting. Now it doesn't actually say that anywhere here, but that is actually what the field is referred to, the call forward no bandwidth setting. Now this field is just a destination mask. So what do I need in this mask? I need an area code. And now remember the endpoint is located in New York. So I'm thinking about calls that are going to the Dallas branch office. So let's say 214 for the area code, and then I need a phone number, so 555. And you can use wildcards here. So we're going to put in a capital XXXX because if I dial just the extension 1001, I want it to go to 214-555-1001. So this way, the extension I dial, whatever it is, will be inserted in place of the Xs. If I had dialed uh, 1002, then that would be inserted here instead. Okay? And what gets prefixed in front of the 214555 depends on whatever you put in your AAR group. So how do you know which AAR group to choose? You want to choose the AAR group that matches where the endpoint lives. So if this is a New York endpoint, meaning that if this endpoint is physically located in New York, then I want to choose the New York AAR group. And that's where the endpoint lives, so I'm going to go ahead and choose NYC AAR. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click Save, and then we're all set. We've successfully configured our CUCM with automated alternate routing. Simple as that. Okay, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.